Hey everyone, happy Homebrew Wednesday. It's been a while since I've done updates, some stuff's been going on. It's kind of into the heavy season of homebrew competitions here locally in San Diego. We have a competition that's right around the corner. Bottles were already, uh, the deadline for bottle turnover was already passed. Uh, I'm talking about America's Finest City Homebrew Competition. It's run by the local homebrew club here, Quaff. They've been around a long time. Quality Ale Fermentation Fraternity is uh, what I believe it stands for. And Quaff is the oldest uh, homebrew club in the county, and that, this is a big competition. It's over 500 plus entries, pretty much every category in the uh, AHA uh, style guidelines is accepted into it. And it's a big competition. And of course, right around the corner is the National Homebrew Competition, which uh, first round uh, is coming up, uh, I think, uh, like mid-March for turn-ins, and there was a lottery system to get in. I got four entries into uh, Austin location, so I, uh, my first choice was San Diego for the drop-off area, so then I wouldn't have to ship my beers, but just uh, because there was a lottery system this time, and initially you're able to go to six entries, and then they changed it to four, so I was just happy to get four somewhere in the country. So at least Austin isn't the East Coast, so I won't be shipping, uh, you know, those extra miles away. So I'm trying to figure out my four beers to come up with. I'm pretty sure I have two of them so far. So uh, the ones I know for sure are going to be my IPA and my English barley wine, and then I believe I'm going to do a Lambic that I bottled recently, and the fourth category I need to figure out. I'm either going to brew this coming weekend or uh, maybe bottle up uh, something, or, or I don't know. I haven't figured it out. We'll get to that. First of all, I'm drinking uh, from Craig at Midnight City Brewing. He sent me his IPA out. And today I'm drinking his Russian Imperial Stout. So I got it poured out. It's completely black. The head that was on there fizzled away. Uh, I don't know if I have the details on this. I um, actually let me go on Facebook real quick, and I, I believe he sent me like the alcohol percentage at least. But um, on the nose, I get a lot of roast and dark fruit, and some like bitter chocolate. It's almost got a sort of a smoky kind of malty edge to it not in like a, a smoked malt just some from that roasted characteristics and uh, it's got some lighter sort of like berry notes so maybe some yeast esters coming through uh, let's give it a try cheers Yeah, it falls in those pretty well. Um, it's got some fruitiness. I just popped this in the freezer like real quick. It was pretty much just below uh, room temperature. I'm trying to scan um, the uh, message. Um, okay, maybe I'm not scanning through stuff, but... Um, oh, that's right. He sent me a... a he wrote a note to me, and I think I threw it away by accident. So I'm not sure what the ABV was. It, I, maybe around 9%, something like that. Yeah, I got a lot of fruitness. Um, you get some of the darker fruits, a little bit of that cherry berry sort of note. Um, maybe more like a fig character. And the back end's pretty pretty roasty. It's It's got some nice sweetness to it, so it's not too dry on the finish. The, the alcohol is pretty well masked. Light on the chocolate character, more on that sort of more roasty coffee characteristics. So I don't know what's going down on down in Florida. Apparently there's like a couple uh, homebrew home groups, uh, two live brews, Midnight nice City, and I, I guess there's just homebrewers going around trying to maybe start breweries or something like that. Anyway, Please comment if you kind of know what's going on in the Florida scene. But it sounds like they can host events and pour their, their beer for people. And that's a little, at least in California, is not something they regularly allow or it, it might be completely legal. I'm not sure how it works out. I guess it depends on whether you pay for the – you absolutely can't pay for the beer, but maybe you can have some workarounds 
like donations or something. I don't know how it all works, but yeah, it's a nice pearl stout. Um, like I mentioned with the water through IPA, um, it wasn't making the hops pop, um, but the, you know the malts are coming through nice on this. So I think your water is is definitely more leanings more towards brewing better uh, malty beers. Yeah, it's nice uh, caramel notes coming through. Um, I don't know why the head fizzled away so quickly though. So um, maybe just a lot of acidic malt characteristics. I'm not sure on that one, but um, it drinks nice. It's not overly bitter with the roast character characteristics, which is nice because it doesn't dry out your tongue so much. So yeah, drinkable stuff, no question about it. On uh, my home brewing front, I've been working on a, a project that I've been thinking about, oh, probably right after, like almost a year ago. It's something that I was thinking about, I think just after Robert and I won the Stone HA Rally competition, and we we're kind of starting to meet with Stone about scaling up Coconut IPA. So... When we were kind of meeting around R and R, I was trying to think of like, okay, well, what what else can I do with an IPA? And of course, at that point, I was already eliminated from this year's competition and the next two years, because it's a three year. The next three years, I, I I'm not able to enter the competition for being a winner. This is some new rules they started last year. So I was thinking, well, what else can I do with an IPA to kind of screw with people's heads? The coconut, I think, came out really, really well. So I wanted to challenge myself come up with something different, so I came up with the idea of doing a chocolate IPA, and how that came about was I was browsing around um, one of the homebrew shops online, and they had this experimental hop, and they mentioned flavors of coconut, chocolate, and citrus, and I thought, huh, well, if it's coconut, that would be cool. I could use that in coconut IPA, and just kind of reinforce the coconut character of the hops with a little bit of coconut. And I, I talked with some brewers here locally that, who got the hop in, did some tests, or tried samples or whatever. And some said they got big coconut characters. Some got, said they got a lot of chocolate characters. So I wasn't sure kind of – I don't know if it's the palate, how they used. I decided, you know what, screw it. Let's try this beer. So I used uh, this experimental hop with some Amarillo because I figure, well – whether I get chocolate or coconut, it's going to go well with orange. And so I wanted the Amarillo to kind of be an undertone of the hop bill and use two hops instead of just one, not be a single hop here. And the idea was, depending on the amount of chalk character I got in the hops, to reinforce that with some cocoa nibs in the keg, you know, after uh, dry hopping. And so that's what I did. And I did add some lactose to the recipe, although the beer dried out till 10.13. So, which is pretty dry for a lactose beer, and I was using, the, I think, third generation yeast, so they threw, made it really dry. If, it would have been a really dry beer if I didn't have any lactose in it. So I kind of wish the lactose had come through a little bit more, so what I decided to do is take a, a small vanilla bean and cut that up and add that in with the uh, cocoa nibs in the keg, and I thought it turned out pretty good, so... Um, I don't know if I'll be posting the recipe for that or not. I might want to dial it in one more batch, but I'm pretty happy with the, the results, and it kind of screws with people's heads when you give them this pale beer and tell them, yeah, it's an IPA with extra ingredients, and they kind of look, and they're trying to figure out what it is, and I tell them, chocolate, right? And they're like, chocolate, that's it. Or some people picked it up right away, like, there's chocolate in this. And so um, I don't know if I necessarily like the beer better than coconut IPA, but I think it's a cool beer. And uh, I was just on Untapped, and I think some other breweries have played around with the idea as well. So I don't think I'm the first brewer that's kind of thought about doing that beer. But I might be the first to use this experimental hop that, to me, has a very nice chocolate character to go with a little bit of a citrus note. So I think it's a cool hop. I don't even know if I can get it anymore. I have enough to do one more batch, so we'll see how that goes. And it, being experimental, it might never make it to the marketplace, too. So I hope it does, because I think you do some cool things with that beer. Be it um, any real style where you sort of want a slight chocolate character, that hop could work. Dark beers, light beers, um, uh, it, it, you know, you guys come up with some uh, crazy stuff out there as well. So 
limited by your imagination with this hop. Just because it's uh, chocolate doesn't mean it has to be a dark beer. And that's kind of what I wanted. Well, I, I kind of felt that Robert and I were doing with Coconut IPA was kind of the same thing. Everyone, you saw Coconut and all the darker beers, uh, be it Browns, Porters, Stouts, you know, Doppelbox, that kind of thing. And we want to try it with the pale beer. So, it's going to wrap this Homebrew Wednesday. It's gone on too too long for now. So, I'll probably have more updates as we get closer to the more competitions. And, you know, hopefully uh, I entered in four beers into AFC. And hopefully that will, uh, well, we'll see how they do. And I'll come back with another vlog with uh, any kind of results I get, good or bad. So, and hopefully get some score sheets for everyone. So, until next time, cheers.